Hello, and welcome to this GIS report with Health in Perspective. As government continues its effort to put preventative programs in place to reduce the morbidity levels of residents affected by chronic diseases, a conference for the implementation of the NCD strategy was held to discuss the status of the health of the population. Non-communicable diseases account for a large percentage of deaths in persons in their productive years. Obesity rates in the Americas are the highest in the world. And the English-speaking Caribbean has the highest per capita burden of NCDs in the region of the Americas. CARICOM leaders have realized the importance of this issue and are challenging the people of the region and the world to unite to stop the NCD epidemic. Locally, according to the results of the STEP survey of 2009, almost half of our population had one to three of the risk factors common to NCDs, including poor nutrition and physical inactivity. Sedentary lifestyle, increased consumption of processed foods high in fat and salt, and this is the unfortunate result. Researchers estimate that if major risk factors for NCDs were eliminated, over 75% of heart diseases, stroke, and type 2 diabetes would be prevented, and close to 40% of cancers would be averted. On the program today, we have here with us the Coordinator for Health Promotion Services and Focal Point for NCDs, Ms. Ivy George, who will share with us some information about the Council and the role they play as government forge towards a healthier Virgin Islands. Ms. George, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ms. Letson. Now, we have been hearing a lot about health in the media most recently, and I know that the ministry just concluded your NCD prevention conference that we briefly alluded to just now. What was the ministry's objective in putting this conference together? Well, the Ministry's uh, objective was to bring together the Council and all its, techni its te the technical working group, its subcommittees and other entities that are being put in place, as well as some of to, show to showcase some of the, um, the national frameworks that we will be using to um, accelerate our effort to improve, to implement the strategy. Mm -hmm. Now we've been hearing some great things that came out as a result of the conference. Can you share with us some of its highlights? Yes, I think one of the most important things that happened at the conference is that we were able to bring together for the first time, as I mentioned, the various sectors that are working together to uh, to be able to improve health across the life cycle. And so at that meeting, we had uh, the inter, the, we was really just dealing with the government aspect of the program, of the, the, the council arm. So the arm of the council that deals with the government coordination um, path, which is the top, the top, the top down path of the program. And at that meeting, uh, we introduced the, the, the members of the technical working group, what the, the group will be, what a group is responsible for, and that the group uh, accomplished its work through six committees. And five of those committees presented their work uh, that they will be doing this year, as well as um, some of the frameworks that we will be that we are putting in place to be able to roll out a comprehensive, integrated, um, across the life cycle program. Mm -hmm. Now you started to go a little in depth about the council, but give us a, a, a nice picture of what the council is, who is it comprised of, how do you see it functioning, and how do you see their function benefiting us collectively as individuals, as society? Well, as one of the requirements coming out of, out of the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting in 2007 
and also in 2011, the, high, the United Nations High Level Meeting on NCD, one of the things that was recommended that in order for us to really make a difference in, uh, in terms of improving the quality of health as well as reducing the burden of disease, we needed to put in place a mechanism, a body that will have oversight for coordinating, advocating, and monitoring the work that needs to be done in order to see the kind of improvement that we need to see to bring about a change in the status of the population, not just individuals. And so, um, in some places, this is called a NCD Commission. In some of the smaller Caribbean islands, like BVI, they are, uh, we are calling them health and wellness councils. And uh, so we have a health and wellness council, and the health and wellness council is made up of people from the government, from the, uh, the private sector, and from civil society. Our new chair is Mr. Elton Georges. Uh, some of the other members, we have representation, representing the youth population, women, faith-based, uh, the community, uh, food and the food industry, as well as there should be someone there representing the, the business sector, as well as community groups. However, we do not have a representative from the community as yet because we have not yet set up the community network, council network. So the council is made up rough and of nine persons, and then their ex officio member, the, the chief medical officer, the chief of staff of the hospital of the BVI Health Services, and the NCD focal point as the secretary. Mm -hmm. Then the, we have rolled out the AM um, that is coordinating the policies, the projects, and the program using a top-down approach, and that is coordinated by what we are calling a technical working group. And so that is made up of a number of persons from the five ministries, including um, statutory bodies. So that working group has been meeting first. We meet once a month, and now we are meeting every other month. But that group of person was the one that have been responsible for sort of setting the pace to get us going. We have set up five, six committees, subcommittees, through which the work of the, con of the, um, the interdepartmental working group is done. And these committees uh, sort of represent across, like we are saying, we need to improve the health of the population across the life cycle. <coughs> Excuse me, across the life cycle. So we have a group that represent, uh, that is trying to improve and strengthen what is happening in the in health sectors, in the health sector, both private, public, and the voluntary cent, uh, sector, which would be your NPOs, like the BVI Diabetic Association, et cetera. Uh, they are dealing with some of the disease kind of issues as well as prevention. Then we have a group called Healthy Spaces and Places, which deals mostly with your inf uh, the built environment. So people leading in that area would be the Ministry of Communication and Works, and the BVI, and the Tongue and Country Planning um, Department. Then we have uh, Healthy Schools, which is a committee made up of a number of persons from various aspects in the Ministry of Education. And we have also Healthy Workplaces. The Healthy Workplaces Committee has been formed, however, it has it's not um, functioning at this particular time. 
then the work there's also work to be done on the food and nutrition and agriculture and the ministry of health had a, a council called the food and nutrition council and so the food the activity on the health healthy eating and agriculture will be focused through that committee mm -hmm. Wonderful stuff, Ms. George. Definitely a lot going on, a lot of different committees with their own roles. But help me to understand, how does the technical working group differ from the council and how do they interact? Well, the council is made up of people, as I mentioned, from civil society, from the um, private sector and government. Mm -hmm. So that is what to, actually, that is what you're calling the all of society um, approach. Then the government piece is called um, fit the requirement for the whole of government approach. And like I said, on the technical working group, on the technical working group, this uh, these the people who are heading these committees are members from various sector within government, and these are also sectors that has. Um, responsibilities in some way for these particular areas. For example, um, the school-age child, the Ministry of Education is the one that um, really deals with that, that target group of population. Workers, I mean for the workforce, you, there's a um, number of persons, but you have health, you have um, the Ministry of Labor, um, Natural Resources and Labor, and you have the Social Security also playing a um, leading role in those particular areas. So what we have done is sort of bring the various sectors that has responsibility for various areas together to avoid duplication and also to make sure that we have a coordinated effort in what we are doing. Awesome stuff, Ms. George. Awesome. Now tell me, as individuals and as communities, how could we get involved? How can me as an individual or even the business community or any other community who may be hearing this message, you know, and want to participate or be a part of, how can they get on board? Okay. Well, as I mentioned, there are various programs that will be or uh, that are being rolled out. And for example, as you're aware, we have through the school in the schools, we right now have the intervention for um, for the food and nutrition part, and so that's so parents and um, vendors and community members will be able to benefit, uh, educated, and can be involved in that particular um, activity because you're looking at the school, the community, and the, the community, the schools are an important part of community. That is what, like, for example, let, let's say the council is at the national level. They'll deal with the big picture, mm -hmm. the policies, the regulations. They, that is what they try to help us to move. Then the, with the, the, the institutional pieces, they are beginning now to put in place program um, of national framework and an action to begin now to roll out um, a plan of action, comprehensive, evidence-based, that will then begin to, um, we will begin to see changes coming about in that particular um, population that it, they are serving. For example, the program that we want to roll out in the workplace is a program that we are calling Total Health. Total Health meaning that it will look at the traditional health protection pieces, but now it will also be included would be the promotional pieces. And the promotional pieces will take care of your chronic disease. And so whereas before we were just looking at things in the environment, et cetera. What is happening in the workplace, chemical, et cetera. So now what we are saying, you need to have a, t treat the person as one. 
And so that program, so you're looking here now for workers, you're looking at employees, that piece will be for coming through the workplace. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, as you talk about physical activity, which is a big piece, that's the uh, physical inactivity is the fourth leading cause of death in the world um, in terms of chronic diseases. So we have been very fortunate to be a part of six countries in the Caribbean that will benefit from the long-term athlete development in inclusive program, which is being um, sponsored by the Sports for Life and the Association for, for um, Olympic Committees in the Caribbean. And what is good about this program is that it starts with um, the children, zero to six, and it goes all the way to adult. You have two pathways. After you reach grade 12, you have a choice to go and play um, professional or what we are calling elite sports, or you can continue on just being active for life. So that's two strand that is going to be, that is right now um, that we are working on. The government, I mean, the Ministry of Health, Education and Sport with, it will deal with what we are calling physical literacy, which will focus on helping us to improve physical activity in the entire population. And they also a special piece where they are working with the, the organized um, federations, and they are being, they will be improving their programs and so for the athlete part of it. Mm -hmm. But this is a good, um, it's, see, this is not coming out of the Ministry of Health per se, but everyone can benefit once we roll out this particular framework. Mm -hmm. So this will be out of the Ministry of the, the Department of Sports, will be playing a, as a leading role in this particular um, framework in terms of physical literacy and sports. So that's one of the, the programs again. And then, as I mentioned, all the federations, different number of community organizations who are doing sporting pieces, they all have been coming together. We had a one symposium when we introduced the, the, the information. We'll have another symposium where we will deal strictly with the physical liter literacy part in September, and we again will draw on people from the Ministry of Health, people um, in working in the community, people working in daycare, uh, preschools, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss George, everything that you're mentioning, you're talking about health, you're talking about nutrition, and you know the roles of different sectors to try to get us as a society where we need to be, and that's towards that healthier, you know, Virgin Islands. No, but what you're asking people to do in essence is to have a paradigm shift. Yes. And you, you're one of the main objectives of your program is to see healthy people living in healthy communities. How do you envision getting this enacted within the community? As I mentioned, it's going to, it will take a while because for so long we have been focusing on health care, but health care don't necessarily result in improvement in health and well-being. So we are asking people to make a shift. And so most of the, the framework that we are using are frameworks that are going to have um, sort of like programs that will deal with activities from age from zero or uh, from four months all the way up to um, to life, I mean to adult or uh, seniors. And so it, it will take a while and that is why we have, and that's why we are trying to roll out them, the, the different programs together. We don't want to say, like some people will say to me, oh, um, you know, you have to start with the children, and but forget the adult. But no, the, 
there are some changes that you can that adults can do now that will also help so we are looking at in the things that the individuals can do which would be like the you know behavior change in terms of eating managing stress spiritual health um the how people are socialized the way how you interact with people those will be some of the things that the individuals can do then there are things that in um the institutions can do uh as i mentioned there's someone on there now for faith based because we recognize that this is an important um uh institution through which we can reach a lot of persons and so we don't want the, the we want to be able to encourage them to have an ongoing um program of healthy lifestyle incorporate in what they're doing now on a regular basis in the in terms of the the, the wider community we are hoping that in community there are various arms uh, i mean like you have the school you have the clinics you have businesses etc and we are hoping that at that level people will come together and some communities uh, the communities are different so that is why we also want to give communities a chance to develop their program so we want to use a community development approach which it will be sort of using a bottom up approach so for example um in let's take my community in my community i would say that we are very fortunate and that we have a number of different opportunities for physical activity we have a public tennis court we have a boxing association we have on a on a, on a night you can go to the community center and it does buzzing with all kinds of people doing physical activity if you get up all in the morning and you go to be filing the beach is full of people swimming jogging walking their dog etc um some churches also have activity if you get up as early as 4 o'clock there are people on the road individually walking in that community mm-hmm. now so in that community that physical activity and opportunity for physical ap- um activity is not a problem but in another community a- another community might say well you know we need a, a gym in our community we need a basketball court we need something so that, this is what we are saying you will then have to look communities will have to then decide what is their priority mm-hmm. for example there are some other communities where you can get more fresh fruits and vegetables and so forth um so all of these by having a top down and a bottom up the meat and we are also through this particular program we are calling it active community participation because from my experience over the years working in community community really don't have a active voice they don't have a way to get a lot of time what they they ex- ex- experiencing and they what they want they don't have a way of getting it up the the, the ladder so through this um con- the councils we are hoping that we will be able to change this mm-hmm. now what are just a few activities will the council be looking into this year well um this year as i mentioned the we are trying to to strengthen and institutionalize the structure that we have put in place because this is another thing uh sometimes you find there is a, a particular we, we have a, a issue with a well if it, if you call it a, like a disease and then the ministry of health will get probably some funding and they they will be the one leading a charge and sometime when that fund is is it's um is no longer there or the person or is no a person is no longer there the whole thing just fall apart what we are trying to do is we are looking for long term sustainability and so the council will be helping us to ensure that we institutionalize uh, this in, this infrastructure um build capacity in the various sectors make sure that the programs that we are recommended are comprehensive mm-hmm. they are sustainable 
and their evidence base. Um, some of them we're going to need financing and so forth. So those are the, the things that we, uh, um, the council will want to be taking on, will be taking on this year mm -hmm. to help us to now that we have our infrastructure in place and our committees and everything, it's now to begin to put some of the, the programs. And we have also to identify a number of, um, we're not re reinventing the wheel. We have been doing a lot of research and we are looking for the best that is out there and we are um, adjusting it to, to, to meet our our needs. Mm -hmm. Now, Ms. George, in this final two minutes of the program, I want you to tie everything together. The role of the council and how it, it goes back to our overarching mis mission of achieving this healthier Virgin Islands. Just wrap everything up for me. Okay. As I mentioned, the council is the, the body established by government under the Ministry of Health uh, to help us to pull together the work of the various sector and um, government, civil society, and the, the community together as we work to integrate it, to make it comprehensive, to make sure that we are uh, 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 um, following, meeting the, the standards, the, the, dec the points that are set out by CARICOM, some points have been set out by the high-level UN meeting. There are a number of um, guidelines, there are conventions and so forth that we are, are following. And so this, the council is sort of like the monitors, uh, check to make sure we are going to be staying on track, etc. Well, thank you, Ms. George, for coming on the program today and, you know, shed some light on the Health and Wellness Advisory Council, you know, what are their role. You talked about the interdepartmental working group and, you know, what they do. And you also spoke about civil society and the community and what all we can do as we forge towards this healthier Virgin Islands and try to get that paradigm shift so we all could be healthy in generations to come. So now I leave you with this opportunity to make any final thoughts? Well, I would just like to thank the, the government and especially the Ministry of Health for giving me this opportunity uh, to serve in this area. I'm very passionate about health, actually the only place that I have worked since I, since I started to work, I've always been in health. I knew very early I started out in nursing, but I know very early that there have to be something better than disease. So my quest have always been to um, find a way of how we can really improve the health and the quality of life for the population, um, for our population, not just for a few. And one of the things that you really need to do is to make sure that you have good um, healthy public policies, you have to have regulations, you have to have good national, well-coordinated, funded program, you have to have the capacity building across the various sector. It just cannot be left. Health is too important to just be left to the Ministry of Health. Thank you very much, Ms. George. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this GIS report where we got in depth about the BVI Health and Wellness Advisory Council, their role, and what we all can do collectively to reach our goal of a healthier Virgin Islands across the life cycle. Together, we can achieve great things. Reporting for the Ministry of Health and Social Development, I am Public Health Communications Specialist Natasha Letson. Thank you for tuning in.